Hello, tea timers. So today I am drinking pure jasmine and um, it's um, <laughs> oh no, oh no. I can't do it without thinking of my sister Jen pretending to be me. <laughs> I didn't, I guess I didn't realize I did that, but I do. So, oh well. It's really nice. <laughs> mm. Pear jasmine. Got some comments. Oh, I got a tickly nose. Okay. Where are we here? So we had a lot of comments, I guess. <laughs> and if you'll know when you look on the site, thank you so much, everybody, for all the love. And um, we it was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. And my, um, I read the comments, all of them to my sister. She couldn't, she couldn't get away because she was, <laughs> she had set up her little station at the, at the, um, table. And so I got my, cause I don't have, I, I, I have, I had a laptop. <laughs> I thought I'd work by Jen cause I work on big, um, ones on my desk, but when I type and everything, so I got out my laptop, I thought I'm going to, I'm going to sit with Jen and we'll, eat tasty snacks and sit at the table, the kitchen table and talk and chat and, and do stuff. And I can answer the comments while I still have some more comments to answer. I can answer the comments and um, read them to Jen while she's doing her stuff on her computer. I got my laptop. I thought it was pretty new, um, but it wouldn't boot up. <laughs> and my husband did it. I said, no, no, this is a new laptop. I remembered getting it. He checked it. He said, it's 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh I thought I just got it like yesterday or you know not yesterday obviously but like two two years ago three years ago it was 10 years old no wonder I couldn't boot it up I couldn't get on to do it so um, I had to borrow his so I was sitting there with her and we had our tea and little snacks and and then I would answer the comments and I was um, reading them to her and she really enjoyed them as well. So thank you all for all the love and everything. Here's one, I'm gonna just share a couple with you. Okay, Brickney Badass. No, Bad Knees, I said Brickney, a ba not Badass, Bad Knees. <laughs> Jen was born for a podcast or to co-host. She has the gift of non-stop talking without getting boring or annoying. Same for Meg too. <laughs> Thank goodness you put that in. <laughs> uh, I love listening to her talk about random stories. Sarah Adams said, currently drinking wine and watching this brilliant start to the weekend. It These comments, I don't know, every you guys all writing, it just made me so, so happy, like reading all that. I'm so glad you guys all had fun. Cheryl Ref, if I had to explain, this one really made Jen laugh. If I had to explain sisters to an alien, this video, and then she had the laughing emoji, really enjoyed this. And SPJW, the pure joy this tea time brought me is beyond words. You two together is like magic. All I kept thinking about is how we need to see more of the two of you together. I know Meg is not into the Hollywood scene as much these days, but somebody needs to find a project for you two. <laughs> a remake of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, maybe a Tilly Sisters podcast. I love my cozy tea time with just Meg, but the world needs to see more of the Tilly Sisters together. It'll be fun. It would be so much fun to work with my sister, Jen. I know I've said that before because you guys are asking all the time, but it would be fun because I just love hanging out with her. Matthew Lucas, OMG, the best ending to a rough day. Well, I'm glad. I'm really glad a lot of you said it lifted your spirits and um, um, there was, um, you know, different people who wrote in and that just made me really happy. Oh, uh, Malisha. Is there really another Chucky movie coming or did Jen mean the series? So I asked her and she said, no, I meant the series. It's just because my sister doesn't really do very many TV shows. So she always just says the movie because that's what she does more of. So yeah, it's a series and who knows? There always seems to be another one of those movies coming down the pipe. But for now, it's the series that she's doing. Um, Debbie Harsh. I just bought, oh, I just bought Cliff's Ed. Can't 
Cliff's Edge. Can't wait to read this novel. Can't wait for Runaway Heiress pre-ordered. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your support. That's so kind of you. Okay, uh, Valerie Clarizo. I love the dress. The dress. Oh, the dress. <laughs> Remember a couple tea times ago when I was wearing my sequin dress for the, um, oh, for the lady has passed over. Wait, I, I actually, my book finally came in. My, um, this is what, so now I'm going to show you. This is where you'll know, like all of a sudden when you see this, you'll be like, oh, now I totally get why Meg was wearing that silver sequin dress and the long dangly shiny earrings. Look at that cover. Doesn't that look like the dress I was wearing, except for she has sleeves, but I didn't have sleeves, but it has the same low neckline and the, the lady has a past and I do too. <laughs> so now I can finally get to read it. It was so hard because I was waiting and waiting for it. And it, it came really late because it came out a while ago. I was waiting for it and waiting for it. I didn't let myself buy it on an e-reader because I thought, no, I, I've already paid for the nice hard cover. I'm going to read it, a book in my hand. So now I have it. So I'll be reading it in the next couple of days. So that dress, guess what happened? So I, you know how I said, oh, it's kind of tight. I squeezed myself into it. So then I finished my tea time. I'm not going to walk around all day in a silver long gown that goes to my ground of the, to, of the sequins. So I, um, started to take it off but I had to wiggle to take it off like this and I got it up like like this far I couldn't get it over my shoulders I couldn't, I couldn't get the darn thing off and those sequins when you're trying to get out of them they're scraping all over you oh my goodness so then I had to go so then I had to kind of pull it down so I could see over over the top of it and I had to go with my arms in the air stuck in the air into where my husband was practicing his guitar and I had to be like honey honey I'm stuck I need your help to get out of this dress so then I had to put my arms and then he helped me get out of it 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 took a it took a while <laughs> the things I do for my friends yeah it it took a while to get out of it um yeah I was, I was <laughs> A little embarrassing. Oh well, good thing I had a husband. I don't. If I was a single, like, if I was a single woman, I don't know how I would have gotten out of that. I might have had to cut myself out of it. Like seriously, it was tight. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, this is one from a little bit back. Jubal saw Agnes of God had lovely things to say and wanted to know how was it filming in Quebec. It sure looked cold. I visited Montreal once way back in the late 80s, and it's certainly a beautiful city with an incredible amount of history. What a trip it was to walk down the streets there and hear so many people speaking French. I felt like I was in Paris, ha ha. How was Norman Jewison as a director? He directed many classic films over the years. I looked him up and he's still with us, with us at age 94. I hope you and your hubby had a very nice weekend. I, it makes me happy to think of Norma Jewison still with us. When I was shooting Bomb Girls, they, he had a, he's very involved in the Toronto Film Festival and he had a party. And so I was like, oh, I have to go because I got an invitation because I was in Toronto. And I went and I saw him and, and he looks the same, just a little bit older. And he was wearing, he was wearing a leather jacket, which I thought was really sweet. Um, he didn't quite, he didn't remember me very much until um, I said, I played Sister Agnes. And then he's like, oh, Sister Agnes. Cause you know, he's quite old now, but what a sweet man. What, what a sweet, sweet man. I loved working with him. Oh, but oh, 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 but working in Montreal. So I was excited to go to Montreal because we take French in school here. So I thought, oh, so I had carefully figure out my phrase to say, like I was going into a shop to order something and I carefully figured out my phrase in French, how to say it. And, and then I said it <laughs> and the woman behind the counter, she just looked at me. She's kind of a little bit rough. She just looked at me and then she like, why are you massacring my language? <laughs> And then she answered me in English. And uh, so I, I didn't really attempt my French again there. But something really, really, really scary happened to me when I was in Montreal. First of all, yes, it was very, very cold. 
Um, we were shooting in the winter in Montreal and in Guelph outside of Toronto, and it was cold. In my under my nun outfit, I had uh, silk long johns and then another pair of long johns sometimes. And the wonderful thing is, is because the habit, the habit has a lot of layers because it had an under layer in the winter. They have nice flannel under layer things. So I had an under layer dress and then it has the, the habit that goes over top and then it had this part. I used to know what they were all called, but I don't now. This part that goes down that's like a just straight sheet part. And then you have the this part and this part and then the veil and that keeps the heat in. The, the, the veil and the thing keeps a lot of nice heat in. But yes, it was it was a bit cold. But what happened to me was my daughter was just a little baby. She was when I started, she was three months old and this might've been, mm, I don't know, maybe it was in the first month of shooting, but we were gonna have a break for Christmas and there was a big shopping center that they had in Montreal and I had a day off and I was going to go, I wanted to go and get Christmas presents for my family because I have a really big family. I really, you know, all my sisters and brothers and we were all gonna be getting together for Christmas. I think we had a break, did we go away? Or maybe I was sending the presents, I don't know. But I was shopping and I had em Emily in the stroller and I stopped in the shops, they were in the shops, but then in the big center parts, there were tables where people were selling things too. The shops would have things outside to entice you in or sometimes people were selling. And there was a hat and a scarf set and I thought, oh, that might be nice. And so I was looking at it, but I kept a hand because I was very nervous about making sure I keep my children safe. I had my hand on the stroller and I turned so that nobody could steal it, right? That's what was in my mind. And I turned and I um, was looking at a couple of the hats and something inside me said, turn, turn now. And I turned and there was this woman and she had her hands around my daughter and was starting to lift her out of the, the, the um, trying to lift her out of my stroller. And I said, what are you doing? And she went and she uh, let go and she backed up and she said, oh, I was just admiring your baby. My heart's pounding. And she, but why was she, why was she doing? And so I was really scared and I said, go away. And, and she went, went away, just disappeared into the crowds of people Christmas shopping. My heart's pounding and I'm really scared. And I think, was she trying to take my baby? Like I felt like she was trying to take my baby. And I thought, but why would she do that? But I was really happy that I had had the safety belt in. I had the safety belt in. Uh, so, so Emily was strapped in and I had a little blanket up, a little like pull blanket over. So she didn't see that she was strapped in. And so then I was um, walking and I was trying to pretend to shop, but I, my heart was still pounding, pounding. I was scared and I just felt, and then I, um, I could see that she was kind of following me from down, like, and then I would, I would go into a store, but then when I would come out, I would see her pretending to look in a, in a window further down. I was so scared. So then I went, so then I started going fast. I tried a couple shops, but then I couldn't, and I didn't know what to do. And I thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get out of here. So I went out and I thought, I gotta lose her. And I went down and I w went out of the shopping center down and I, I was out on the street and I went down and I got into the, like crissy crossy roads and I turned some roads really fast, walking fast. And I went into this shop and it was a, a shop that sold uh, Chinese things like, uh, you know, the, the the little cats with the paws like this, doot, 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 the eyes going toot, toot, and um, little things with incense and bowls and the little uh, spoons for the soup and stuff like that. And I was going down, and um, but I was still really scared. And then I came around a thing and I saw her. I saw her pretending to look at stuff on a thing. And I thought, she's gonna just keep following me. She is, like I knew then, if she, what's she doing in this this little offbeat shop? And I just thought, I have to face it. And I walked up to her and I was really, I was like really mad and I said, go away. You cannot, I know what you're trying to do. I said really, really loud. I said, you're trying to steal my baby. And she's like this and she goes on. I said, get out of here. I yelled really loud and she was back going back like this. And then she went and she ran out of the store. And I was really, really, really scared. And then I um, went to the store owner and I said, someone's been following me, trying to get my baby. 
can you please call a taxi? And I caught a taxi and I didn't, I didn't get any Christmas shopping done that day. And I, I went back to the hotel. That was so scary. Can you imagine how different my life would have been and how different my daughter's life would have been? Like, oh, like that would be, and what did she, and how different, like was she somebody who steals babies just to like sell them? Or was she someone who had wanted a baby, longed for a baby and couldn't have a baby and she saw me and you know, I was uh, 24, but I looked younger and maybe she thought, you know, I could have many of them. Well, I did, I did end up having three, but, um, but yeah, I didn't even know that kind of thing happened. I always thought if I kept my hand, so after that, after that, whenever I was shopping with my children, I would have like when they were little, I instead, I would, if I had it, I would have my hand instead of in there, I would have it on my child and I would only look away. Like, and I would, it was like, whoa, I was, Anyway, that was a very scary thing. <laughs> so that's how, that's what I remember about Montreal. That, I've only been to Montreal twice. That and the time I told you about when I was at the wedding and, and some naked guy managed to get in my hotel room. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd like to give it a, a third try. I, you know, the third time probably because it is it um, is very beautiful and you know, they have wonderful restaurants and, you know, I see shows, but whenever I think of it, I, 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 I do think of those two instant, instances. Anyway, I'll talk to you later and um, thank you again, all of you for joining our tea time and for all your lovely comments to be in my sister. Bye-bye.